The 19th century Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky was born into a noble family in Ukraine. As a child, young Helena displayed a gift for clairvoyance as well as an interest in metaphysical phenomena. Years later, she traveled throughout Europe, the Middle East, and India, studying with various teachers and Sufi saints. Following the guidance of an Indian yogi named Mahatma Moriya, Madame Blavatsky co-founded the Theosophical Society. Theosophy, meaning divine wisdom, refers to knowledge that comes through spiritual experience rather than intellectual understanding alone. The Theosophical Society is dedicated to uplifting humanity through a realization of the oneness of life and the wisdom underlying all religions. Madame Blavatsky wrote several important books on theosophy, including Isis Unveiled, The Secret Doctrine, The Key to Theosophy, and The Voice of the Silence. The Key to Theosophy unlocks the door that leads to a deeper study of theosophy in contrast to other theosophy volumes. It is written in simple explanatory language. Readers are thus able to more easily understand its fundamental principles. Today on Words of Wisdom, we invite you to join us for excerpts from The Key to Theosophy. In this section, The Common Origin of Man, we see that all of humanity is united through a spiritual essence that is identical for us all. Understanding this can also lead to a peaceful understanding among religions, since it will then be clear that all beliefs in the divine originate from the same higher source. The Common Origin of Man Theosophist, all men have spiritually and physically the same origin, which is the fundamental teaching of theosophy. As mankind is essentially of one and the same essence, and that essence is one, infinite, uncreated, and eternal, whether we call it God or nature, nothing, therefore, can affect one nation or one man without affecting all other nations and all other men. This is as certain and as obvious as that a stone thrown into a pond will, sooner or later, set in motion every single drop of water therein. Enquirer But this is not the teaching of Christ, but rather a pantheistic notion. Theosophist, that is where your mistake lies. It is purely Christian, although not Judaic and therefore, perhaps, your biblical nations prefer to ignore it. Enquirer, this is a wholesale and unjust accusation. Where are your proofs for such a statement? Theosophist, they are ready at hand. Christ is alleged to have said, Love each other, and love your enemies. For if ye love them only which love you, what reward or merit have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren or fellow Christians only, what do ye more than others? Do not even publicans so. These are Christ's words. But Genesis 9, 25 says, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And therefore, Christian but biblical people prefer the law of Moses to Christ's law of love. They base upon the Old Testament, which panders to all their passions, their laws of conquest, annexation, and tyranny over races which they call inferior. What crimes have been committed on the strength of this infernal, if taken in its dead letter, passage in Genesis? History alone gives us an idea, however inadequate. Enquirer I have heard you say that the identity of your physical origin is proved by science, that of our spiritual origin by the wisdom religion. Yet we do not find Darwinists exhibiting great fraternal affection. Theosophist, just so. This is what shows the deficiency of the materialistic systems. 
and proves that we theosophists are in the right. The identity of our physical origin makes no appeal to our higher and deeper feelings. Matter, deprived of its soul and spirit or its divine essence, cannot speak to the human heart. But the identity of the soul and spirit of real immortal man, as theosophy teaches us, once proven and deep-rooted in our hearts, would lead us far on the road of real charity and brotherly goodwill. Enquirer, but how does theosophy explain the common origin of man? Theosophist, by teaching that the root of all nature, objective and subjective, and everything else in the universe, visible and invisible, is, was, and ever will be, one absolute essence from which all starts and into which everything returns. This is Aryan philosophy, fully represented only by the Vedantins, or followers of the Vedanta philosophy and the Buddhist system. With this object in view, it is the duty of all theosophists to promote in every practical way and in all countries the spread of non-sectarian education. Enquirer, what do the written statutes of your society advise its members to do besides this? On the physical plane, I mean. Theosophist, in order to awaken brotherly feeling among nations, we have to assist in the international exchange of useful arts and products by advice, information, and cooperation with all worthy individuals and associations, provided, however, at the statutes, that no benefit or percentage shall be taken by the society or the fellows for its or their corporate services. For instance, to take a practical illustration, the organization of society depicted by Edward Bellamy in his magnificent work, Looking Backwards, admirably represents the theosophical idea of what should be the first great step towards the full realization of universal brotherhood. The state of things he depicts falls short of perfection because selfishness still exists and operates in the hearts of men. But in the main, selfishness and individualism have been overcome by the feeling of solidarity and mutual brotherhood and the scheme of life there described reduces the causes tending to create and foster selfishness to a minimum. Inquirer, then as a theosophist, you will take part in an effort to realize such an ideal? Theosophist, certainly, and we have proved it by action. The influence of theosophy and of the society is plain, for they all take as their basis their first and fundamental principle, the brotherhood of humanity as taught by theosophy. In their declaration of principles, they state, the principle of the brotherhood of humanity is one of the eternal truths that govern the world's progress on lines which distinguish human nature from brute nature. What can be more theosophical than this? But it is not enough. What is also needed is to impress men with the idea that if the root of mankind is one, then there must also be one truth which finds expression in all the various religions. It is always a great thing to care, whether it's environmental issues, animal rights, women's rights, equality. Never be afraid to show how much you care. Natalie Portman, vegan. Truth-seeking viewers, it has been a pleasure to have you with us today for The Common Origin of Man, Selections from Theosophy's Sacred Teachings in The Key to Theosophy, Part 1 of 2 on Words of Wisdom.